guys, what's happening? It's Richard here from Channel 23, ha ha ha, and welcome to another episode of comics! Yeah! I love comics, they're so much fun to read. You know, honestly guys, every time I wear these glasses, I feel like Clark Kent. <laughs> I just want to go, Lois, I'm coming! Forgot my cape. So unfortunately guys, Carter's not going to be here in this episode today because he was busy. Uh, should I tell you? He told me not to, but... Between you and me, there are days when Carter is himself, but there are other days when he is well known as the religious public figure, the Pope. I don't know how he gets from here to the Vatican. I don't know how he does it, but he's the frickin' Pope, I'm telling you. Look up a picture of the of the Pope and you'll recognize there's there's a hardcore similarity between both Carter and the Pope. It's, it's uncanny. No, uh, he was doing uh, some charity work at his school and so he didn't have time to film. I mean, he's not the Pope, but he's saintly like the Pope. So today in DC Comics news, six actresses were listed as possible candidates to get a role in The Dark Knight Rises, Christopher Nolan's third Batman movie. Those actresses are Natalie Portman, Kira Knightley, Anne Hathaway, Naomi Watts, Rachel Wise, and the Green Lantern's Blake Lively. Now the roles that each of these actresses are considered for are two specific roles, a, a new love interest for Bruce Wayne and a villain. Obviously the villain has to be Catwoman, you know, because, you know, Nolan has that whole I have to stick within reality thing and I, I couldn't see him doing Poison Ivy properly without, you know, kind of breaking that rule. So obviously he's got to go with Catwoman. So which of these six actresses do you think would make the perfect Catwoman, if, since that's probably the role it is? And who also do you think would play a good love interest, whether one from the comics or an original idea like Rachel Dawes? Tell me in the comments below. A big thing at DC Comics right now is they just made an online digital comic store, which is, you know, I think Marvel has one. But you can go there, you can, uh, they're updating it like crazy now. You can download them, put them on your iPad, you know, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I think they have Batman R.I.P.'s up there, uh, All-Star Superman, uh, Dark Knight Returns, Bat uh, Superman for Tomorrow, uh, I think they're all up there. You know, books like that, so, you know, go check it out and, uh, tell me what you think of it. And finally, I'm gonna be reviewing for you guys Batman Return of the Swing number 6, written by Grant Morrison with art by Lee Garbett and Holly Pies. Art-wise, um, I've never been a huge uh, Lee Garbett fan. I mean, I'm not, his artwork isn't bad. Like, here's a picture of uh, the, the search crew <laughs> at Vanishing Point. Um, his art's not bad at all. It's actually quite good in this book, but I've never been a huge fan of him. However, pre-press, I swear to God, the guy is the world's greatest uh, filler slash copy and paster. Because you can look through this book and, you know, right here, this is a pre press page. I didn't even notice through my first read-through. And here's a Lee Garbett page. I've never seen him do a book by himself, so I might be uh, going a little too overcritical with it. You know, yeah, that's how I think of him right now. <laughs> uh, Story-wise, uh, I really like this issue because you really see Bruce Wayne grow up. You really see why his views change on things and why... You know, like I said, this this issue tells you why he does what he does, and why he chooses the path that he does with Batman Inc. and all that stuff. And you really see him grow up, and and that's why I really liked this issue a lot. Overall, I highly recommend this issue uh, to anyone who's been loving Grant Morrison's run as much as I have. I'm gonna give it a five and a half, or no, four and a half out of five. Four and a half out of five. Change that. Now before I go, uh, instead of a comment, uh, opinion slash comment question of the day, I have a new segment that we might do every once in a while, Carter and I, on this show, and I call it A Comic Book Story. So I have a really awesome story for you guys. This week I've been going through a bit of a pickle because I had three books coming out this week. Uh, Return of Bruce Wayne, number six, uh, Night and Squire, number two, and American Vampire, number eight, were the three comic books that I really wanted this week. However, I did not have enough money to get all three. So when it came down to it, I knew I had to get Return of Bruce Wayne. Uh, that, that was a need as opposed to a want. So my dilemma came down to, should I get Night and Squire number two or American Vampire number eight? 
Because this is a big dilemma, I asked people on Facebook and Twitter, you know, which books I should get. Now here's the fun part. I got a direct message on Twitter from Scott Snyder, the creator of American Vampire, who told me that he thinks I should get Paul Cornell's issue and that he'd be willing to send me a copy of American Vampire number eight. How cool is that? You know, you never have, it's like, a, it's like a once in a lifetime Kodak moment kind of thing. You never expect that to happen. I haven't gotten the issue yet, so you know, I don't know when he, when or if he sent it or not, but I am excited to get it. And uh, for the rest of this, I just want to direct this at Scott, if you watch this, Scott Snyder. Uh, thank you so much. That's really nice of you. Um, I absolutely love your work, and I cannot wait to read your Detective Comics run. You know, two thumbs up for you, man. And also to everybody else, if you haven't, follow American Vampire. It's a fantastic series. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. And also, I'll put a link to Scott Snyder's Twitter account, so follow him, give him some love, and send him this video, and uh, all that jazz. I want to thank you guys for watching, and I want you guys to subscribe and follow the Comics Twitter and the Comics Facebook page. And before I go, uh, the winner, if you will, of the Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon shout out is Wild Ride, I hope I said that right, uh, who connected Anna Paquin and Andrew Garfield together within the shortest amount of time, with the shortest amount of uh, connections possible. So congrats, man. Go subscribe to Wild Ride and all that jazz. And I'll see you all next Wednesday. And Carter and I will see you guys next Friday. Bye bye!